Hello folks, Brandon Chapman with you today. It's another edition of the Theo Knight video. This is for Tuesday, May 31st, 2022. It's the last day of May. I hope you had a great Memorial Day. I hope you visited some uh, some families' graves. I hope you gave some flowers, some mums, whatever you do as a tradition. Uh, but I hope we uh, moralize the people that we love in our lives and, and have lo that we've lost. Anyway, let's get rolling. Uh, so today, the uh, ES is basically unched on the session. We're down a little bit. We got this kind of long-legged spinning, spinning top today for the market. Uh, as we look at the cash open and close here for the SPY, we just bring it up here. Uh, again, looks very, very similar, right? We open slightly lower. We may finish slightly higher or unched for today's session. The big question now becomes, what's next? And uh, so I titled today's session, Fed on the QT. What does that mean for the bulls? QT referring to quantitative tightening. Are they going to reduce the size of their balance sheet or sell assets? They're certainly on the verge of that. And we'll take a look at the balance sheet and among other stocks that are moving today and unusual option activity. Um, as we talked about last week in the video uh, on the 23rd, uh, the, the movement is likely to the upside. We looked at maybe 4.1460, the 38% retracement from the down move uh, from March 29th to the low on May 20th. And now we're getting a spinning top at this level. Now, the question is, what le what, what's the next leg? Are we going higher or are we going lower? Now, you look at today's activity and you'll see on the high short interest watch list, um, shorts are still being squeezed higher, but to a lesser degree. Uh, didn't see as much bullish activity on a lot of those names today as well. Uh, a few of them related to energy was about was about it. You know, maybe a few others, but uh, anyway, we'll we'll dig into that more as some of those names have actually faded, like a rig, for example, or oxy. Um, so the question is, are we running out of steam? And it's very likely we are now. There's things that we can do to look at that. So before we do, let's quickly look at uh, the sectors. And I'm going to bring up the sector spider ETFs here. And energy was the second best performing, or actually was the top performing ETF earlier this morning. And now it's the worst performing. What's going on here? Um, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit. But as we look at the market, um, cyclicals, communications are up there, financials are hanging on, but for the most part, everything's wilting, really being led by energy. As you see, we gapped higher and we're rolling lower. And what I want to throw out here is this does create somewhat of an opportunity. When I say opportunity, I'm talking bullishly in energy and we'll talk more about that. But as we get back to the S and P and we look at the VIX, the VIX today is slightly higher, which makes sense. The market's slightly lower. We're currently testing a really key level at around that 25 spot. Now, before, I've said before, 25 is going to be a hard level to get below. We've tested it once, twice, now three times as of Friday's close. And as we look forward, normally you could look at things like the VIX 3M plus VIX ratio and say, you know, what kind of opportunity is there expected going forward? But the problem is in a bearish climate like we're seeing, it's going to have a hard time getting above 110. Normally, 120 is the key. We popped above there early May before falling back again. So what we need to see right now is that you know we need to see this kind of push higher towards 1.2. What that means is that the three-month VIX is 20% higher than the VIX. It doesn't mean that we're going to get it, though. It's not like it is in a bullish market. Right now, we have SKU, for example. SKU's down around what? As of yet, Friday's close, around 121. We tested as low as 117 and a half. This is a market clearing event. Market clearing means we clear the way to the upside. When you think about skew, negative skew, we have what? Large downside risk, right? We got these long tails over here, short tails on the upside. When the skew falls like this, we begin to unlock the upside where there's more balance. And that's kind of what we've seen over the last week here, right? We go back to the S&P. We've had a pretty nice rally. Now, the question is, where do we go from here? And again, this is where it gets a little bit more uncertain. The volatility would say there's a chance we do break higher and the VIX starts to sell from 25 and drops to 20, and we create a really nice short opportunity. But rallies and bear markets are sold. You typically don't reach those overbought extremes. 
We've got to be prepared for the downside here. Now, one of those areas that were bullish today, of course, the European Union, they're looking to sanction Russia and they're coming up with their, their sixth agreement to limit exports, whatever, maybe six months from now. Who knows, right? Who knows what this, this kind of uh, confusing uh, policy, all their, it's just they're doing something to do something, which means they're not doing really anything. But it is affecting energy prices. So forward slash CLU today, you notice we did break to the upside, but we faded back to close. Okay. Now with this, we know that the oil market is undersupplied. So forward slash CL, we know that by virtue of the fact that oil is in backwardation today. Did anything change? Look at the slope of the red line here. Compare it to a week ago or two weeks ago. It's virtually the same. So while we saw a spike in oil based on that news and the selling today, we're going to get more inventory data this week that might give us a sense of where things are at. But the reality of inventories is that we are pretty well undersupplied right now. So if we look at this, this called This Week in Petroleum, it's put out by the, uh, um, the EIA. Look at where we are right now. As of last week, we're, we're decently below, about 420, 420 million barrels. Normally, we're probably the lower end is about 430. The upper end of the range is what? About four, what, 520, 530. We are well under supplied right now, and we're just about to enter a period. If you look here where the supply drops, summer driving season, where we're going to see some demand start to pick up and very likely see supplies dwindle even further. When you look at the production side, production is leveled off up here at around what? Just under 12 million barrels. That's probably close to 5 million barrels less than we were producing pre-COVID. So where do we make up the difference? We're not taking in, or not, well, presumably not going to be taking in Russian exports. Okay, is it pipeline? Is it by ship? Who knows, right? It's so convoluted, but the reality is, we're not increasing production. And the time frame to increase production has been lengthened potentially three or four times compared to where it was pre-COVID-19. So we're in a very, very difficult position in terms of oil. Oil saw the squeeze and what you see here in terms of the backwardation in oil, nothing's going to change in very soon. They're not, nothing's really going to change for a while now, maybe a year, maybe three or six months. Who knows? What we're looking at right now, though, is we're testing a resistance level. But the product depth, the backwardation oil, says the risk is still to the upside. Now, it doesn't mean that we can't get a little extreme in the near term. Okay? And as we look at XLE, that's kind of what happened today. We got a little bit extreme, and people are selling into it. But as we look at this, again, as I've said, really since when? December. <laughs> look at these sell-offs as opportunities. Those opportunities are still there. They may get more difficult, such as April to May. They may even get, they could accelerate like we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Again, we can't predict the future, but we know that energy is in a good position. And if you're not in energy, you're looking at today as an opportunity. If you're in energy, you might be looking today as a profit taking opportunity. And as we pull back here towards, let's say, 84, or 85 and settle in, looking to bounce, this creates a new opportunity to go long. Draw your trend lines here, right? You'll see that what? We have a upward sloping trend lines. We pull back towards 84-ish, 84.50, 85. We're in an area to start to look to get long again. And that's assuming we get there because there's a chance that we don't. As we look at some of the energy names that move today, companies like Oxy. Oxy gapped higher and faded back. You're looking at this and, and looking at it and licking your chops and great. If we can pull back to 67.50, great. This creates an opportunity, assuming we still have that backwardation in oil. Well, we probably are going to. And Oxy also has some rather high short interest, so you get the short squeeze property. The other stock in that list, Rig, as well. We're testing resistance. We may break out. We could run easily towards, what, 475? Maybe even 550 here. But as we circle back to Oxy, there's activity happening today that's been bullish, at least on the open. If we look here at the trade tab, it's a 1 July expiration. So it's out here just a little bit. 4,200 contracts traded at the $80 strike price on Oxy. 
mostly bought. So what are we doing? We're thinking what? 80 bucks? Is that even possible in Oxy? Well, we've been saying this for a long time, right? Back here, is 60 possible? Is 70 possible? Now is 80 possible? Absolutely. See where this pullback goes. Look to consider buying the dips. As we look out towards that $80 strike price here, volatility is flat. You don't have that upside, you know, kind of rising call volatility, but it's flat. It's not going to hurt you a lot. It's not going to help you. These call verticals are rather expensive. Okay. But that's oxy. But it wasn't just oxy today. Northern oil and gas is another example. Northern was for a July expiration since the last monthlies. Buying a 34, selling a 37. An upside call spread to the 37 strike price in NOG. We're already extreme. Look at this pullback towards maybe 30 and maybe a run back towards 37 again. Okay. Um, Exxon. Got a couple more. <laughs> Exxon hitting some resistance today. Again, draw your trend lines and say, where could this thing end up? 93. Look at your resistance back there, about 92. These are reasonable areas for this thing to pull back. As we look at Exxon for today, uh, it was for a 3 June, very short dated um, out here at the 100 strike price. Someone's thinking mostly bought, we could maybe hit 100. Well, we kind of did today. All right, so none of that, all that may not carry over, right? As we look between today and tomorrow, all that may not necessarily carry over. But again, you watch it, right? We start to catch a move. Maybe we see more activity enter tomorrow. Finally, we're going to look at Res, RPC. On Res, we're setting up near support down here, right? We get a rally and a fade. On Res, it was uh, 15 July. It was an 11 strike price up here, which is... About the 61% retracement of the downtrend. We're not talking about anything really got it here in terms of numbers, right? But we have what? A50 to about an 11, $10 range, a buck 50. 1150 would be the price target if we take out the highs here. And if we go to the trade tab, 17,000 contracts, mostly the ask at the $11 strike price for 15 July. Okay? So what we're seeing is today, you saw again early. But you saw bullish activity coming into the energy space. And we think about this, the backdrop of the Fed on the QT, quantitative tightening. They're about to raise rates 50 basis points. Like, what is it, June 19th? I can't remember what the meeting is this week. There's been some tempering later in the year in terms of interest rate increases. Is the Fed going to pull back? Are they going to blink? Well, if we look at the Fed's ba balance sheet, this is using Fred from the St. Louis Fed here. Notice how really since March has been pretty flat. Last week, we took a tick down from Wednesday, May 18th to the 25th of about what? 30, about what? Three, 30 billion dollars. Whoopity do, right? <laughs> We're standing close to 9 trillion in terms of their total assets. So as they buy stuff and they pay dollars for them, they expand the monetary stock. But they're expected in June to start to see what? Tightening. And it's not stealthy, by the way. And we're talking chunks. But with chunks, you know, $100, $190 billion a month, $100 billion a month chunks out of $9 trillion is not a lot. But the realities on the market could be profound. So the question I ask, well, how does this relate to the bulls? We've talked about one part of the market here in terms of energy that is going to have a difficult time moving down. Unless what? Unless we hit recession. And we start to see demand destruction because we know the supplies aren't there. Agricultural commodities. We know the supply issues are going to be there for a while. So a nice run up in early May in wheat. We're down a bit today. The only thing that's going to create a bearishness around commodities right now is a recession expectation. But we're going to go have to go through a period of quantitative tightening, and that's through raising of interest rates and actually lowering the Fed's balance sheet before we really get there. And so these sell-offs in commodities could be welcomed on the part of, of buyers, right? So again, ADM, 
ADM is up 2% today. Agriculture commodities down, ADM's up. FMC core, right? Down a little bit, but off of our lows. Um, what about CF, fertilizer? Fertilizer was up today, 2.8%. The fact of the matter is there's still opportunities in these agriculture and commodity stocks. Why? The Fed can't do anything about it unless we push towards recession. The Fed can do stuff about technology, however. Right? Technology's caught a nice bit over the last couple of days. This is one of the higher beta names. There's a lot of short interest in these names. Yeah, we got some wind at our back. Apple finally participated last week for two days. But the reality is here is that what? This is a highly cyclical business in which, again, if we see a more of an economic downturn, even the Fed raising rates and draining the pool of liquidity will limit these companies to continue to demand high multiples on their stock price. They're in jeopardy. So when we think about the Fed and their impact on inflation, we're talking about what? Asset price inflation. This is something I've talked about extensively for a really long time. It's something that Powell has talked about, the idea of how do we supply, how do we fix the supply chain through monetary policy? You can't. You can fix that over decades or ruin it over decades. The fact of the matter is the Fed policies have ruined it over the course of decades, and we are where we are because of it. So recognize this creates an opportunity to potentially look to go short. So we look at products like HYG. This is high yield credit, right? Huge run. We talked last week about the prospects. In fact, we looked at LQD of risk spreads coming in. I should have parlayed that to HYG as well because this is part of that risk spread story. Risk spreads came in. Spreads came in. The yield that you're paying for high yield and investment grade credit over treasuries. It came in dramatically. We tested the 61% level on HYG, but guess what? Today, we're seeing a roll in HYG to September. Where is it being rolled to? Down here at the 71 strike price rolled from a July 70. So rolling up and out. Look right. Oh, sorry. It's a lie. Ah, I got it wrong. That's August. Clicked on the wrong one. July right here. From that same July 70. So we're closing this out. We're rolling it out and up. It's the bell. But, but folks, I mean, again, what are we seeing? We're seeing potentially downside to 71 starting to open up again. We're seeing the bears start to come back into HYG. Some expectation that we're going to see a decline in HYG. Makes sense. We had a huge, huge rally last week. You don't have to structure something way out of the money like that. You could do a simple kind of in-out spread. For example, we're at 79 and a half. Could you buy an 80 and sell a 79? Yeah. Better yet, buy an 80 and sell a 78. All right. Again, it just gives you an opportunity. If we're below 79 or 78, in 45 days, you've done pretty good. In fact, you close it out if you get to 50%, 55%. Don just did a preview today on in-out spreads. Great track record. You may want to look into it. <laughs> okay? All right. So it's kind of what we're talking about there in HYG. In, buy in, sell out. Buy in, sell out. Buy in, sell out. Okay? As we look at another area, if yields are going higher, Look at TLT today. Now, TLT, we're down in terms of price, up in yields. Uh, trade today in TLT was a 3 June. is a 116, 115 right there. Expectation rolling up the 115 to 116, re-engaging. Look for this thing to get below 116. If we see a selling in treasuries, yields moving higher, it's going to pressure HYG. It's also going to cause borrowing costs to go up. Well, guess what happened today with XHB? XHB had a nice run for a few days. We're at resistance. Stock's down today. What's going to happen? Don't know. But if we look at the option activity, there are some bets being placed for September. These are rolls. But what are they doing? They're rolling up 
from a 50 up to a 51. We're closing the 50 out, buying the 53, trying to be more connected if we start to see a near-term drop in the price of these stocks. But it's opening up what? $53. So what you're seeing is the bears coming in and putting on these trades today. The one area that's kind of bullish is you think about areas that are opening up. COVID, it's hard to say these days, like, given where we're at, K-Web. K-Web was up today. It was a uh, 15 July, 31.35, rolling out to the 35. Can we get there? Sure. If we hold up in the market, again, given the reopening and kind of Beijing, Shanghai, it's a possibility. I called out activity last Wednesday, Wednesday on Asher, for example. It's moving higher today. Uh, July 34s up here, for example. FXI today as well. Uh, a July 34 right there. So again, we're looking at the possibility Chinese stocks may see catch some a little more of a bid in the near term, pushing towards resistance. Again, you might consider some of these with an out of the money call spread. Okay, looking to target 34. If you get there, great. If you don't, you're risking a little bit. It's a little bit of a lottery tick trade in case we see a big, big move in these names. We'll wrap things up with BITO. Uh, Bitcoin breaking out, Bitcoin stocks making a bit of a breakout today. So BITO, this is a very near-term phenomenon, right? As we look at BITO, this is a BITO. Um, you'll notice out here at the 23 strike for, for July. Okay. So again, what are we looking for? A, a near-term move towards about that one-third retracement. It's not a huge move. You'd probably consider doing that with an upside call spread. The volatility is not super favorable, but looking at 23. On the flip side, though, we look at coin, right? Coin's very unnecessary if you're, <laughs> if you're interested in cryptocurrency, other than it's convenient, okay? But in, in, in coin today, what you saw was a roll up and out to the, uh, the 75 strike price for September, mostly bought. Looking at downside right now in coin. So you get the near term maybe pop in some of these Bitcoin names, but in reality, the bigger trend is likely down. As the Fed is reducing its balance sheet, it is not good for Bitcoin. Once that dollar starts to spike due to the decrease in the monetary stock and the money supply, if credit starts to become stressed, it's going to create downside in Bitcoin as well as gold. Gold's reflecting that today. Bitcoin is not. Maybe we catch a little bit of a near-term up move in Bitcoin, but again, it should be relatively limited, maybe towards maybe 35,000 here. The bigger trend's going to be down as we see the Fed raise rates, decrease the size of its balance sheet, should strengthen the dollar in real terms and relative terms compared to like euro, et cetera. But in the near term, we do have a little bit of an opportunity for a reprieve, thus buy to bigger picture, keep your eye on the ball. The risk is still to the downside as the Fed is about to engage in the QT, <laughs> getting on the QT, quantitative tightening plan. Okay, we can't take our off the ball here. We are in a bearish market. Risk assets are in jeopardy. Dollar denominated assets like Bitcoin and gold are in jeopardy until we start to see them capitulate themselves and finally get off the QT and get to the QE. Anyway, that's all we got for today, folks. Thank you.